Alrighty, um, in this test we're going to do an on the fly test and we're going to have a look if a spinning rotor with magnets in it adds any sort of efficiency to a uh, pulse system um, in regards to the flyback. So um, I'll do a quick run through what we're doing here. Uh, we're running off of our 12 volt battery. This meter here is reading our current. Um, that meter is between the battery and a big filter cap, 10,000 UF, 63 volt high current cap. Um, so that gives us a very smooth and stable current reading at the battery voltage. We don't need to worry about the battery voltage because that will remain the same. Okay, so um, that is our power in for our pulse system here. Um, this meter here, I'll turn it that way a bit, get the light out of it. This meter here is reading the voltage across our cap that has a 100 ohm resistor paralleled across that cap that is um, dissipating the power from our inductive kickback. So um, our diode is on the collector when the transistor switches off the flyback from our coil over there goes through that diode and into the cap um, and of course the negative side of the cap is connected to the positive side of our input so um, the basic SSG circuit um, the only difference is we have our um, what we call our um, trigger coil disconnected and we are triggering our transistor um, which is a tip 3055 we're triggering that from our signal generator here let's turn my scope back on at 35 hertz, 33% duty cycle. So, um, 35 hertz is our um, frequency on our coil. Now, this is a um, very low frequency because I had to hand spin the rotor to get it to um, match up with the pulses. So, um, they're in phase and the rotor spins at that 35 hertz frequency. Um, so that's pretty much it. So uh, this is showing us the um, flyback power being dissipated across our resistor. Um, and our 12 volts at 371, 70 milliamps input is what is running the system. So um, the system's going to run regardless of whether the rotor there is there or not. What we want to do is an on-the-fly test where we allow the rotor to spin um, and we can see how much our input power is and how much our output from our flyback is. So 7.04 volts across 100 ohms that will give you our power being dissipated across that resistor. Um, Alright, so that's with the rotor and our magnets in there spinning past the coil. I have eight magnets in there, uh, alternating fields. And um, that is the waveform we have across the emitter collector. So you need to take note of that waveform with the uh, rotor and the magnets in play. I'm actually going to capture that and I'll post it on the thread along with the uh, screenshot when we do not have the rotor in play. Okay, so it's running along there quite nicely. I said 372 milliamps. Our battery voltage is about 12.9 volts. Um, and our output is our 7.04 volts across our 100 ohm resistor. So all we're going to do now is I'm just going to stop the rotor and remove it and then we're going to have a look and uh, nothing else in the system is going to change. 
everything will remain the same. The only thing we're going to do is remove the rotor with our magnets in it. So um, once again, that is our waveform with our rotor and our magnets. Our voltage across our 100 ohm resistor on the flyback output. And our current going into the system. Okay, so let's uh, just stop that rotor. And I'll see if I can lift it off one handed. The system is running, I can see it peel it pulling on that rotor. And the rotor doesn't want to come off, it's a bit stuck. Tight bearings. Okay. Our rotor is now removed, we've changed nothing. Still our 35 hertz. And uh, look at our waveform now. Our mean or average voltage still remains the same. The waveform has changed. Our current draw has gone up to the system. And our voltage across our 100 ohm resistor on the flyback has gone down. So we did nothing but remove that rotor with the magnets and um, our system is now consuming more power and it is also putting out less power. So um, interesting stuff. It was very clear that the uh, rotor with the magnets increased the efficiency of this system which um, is a very strong indication that those magnets were in fact doing useful work. Alright, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next video and uh, with just another one where we go very deep inside the pulse motor and look at every aspect. We can now confirm that a rotor with spinning magnets adds to the efficiency of a pulse motor um, and this was at a very low frequency the higher the frequency the higher the efficiency because the more power um, the spinning magnets passing the coil will produce and add to the flyback and um, also because those magnets lift the voltage in that coil our um, current will drop down because it doesn't it only has to raise the voltage from a certain level as the magnets have already started to do that and get the current flowing. So um, there you go. I think that's a pretty strong case in favour of our magnets. Cheers guys.